My name is Mark. Welcome to my shop. This is part two of the Convector Connection Corrosion Educational Video Series. Um, if you haven't seen part one, you need to do so. I don't want to do a big recap of everything that we went over in the first one. And if you don't start with video one, you won't really know what's going on here. Um, basically, since we broached the subject of this convector corrosion business, a lot of people started looking at their trailers <clears throat> and they started noticing that they've got some corrosion going on. Um, so uh, this video was going to be a remediation video um, basically done in my trailer um, so that you could see exactly how it's done. But uh, the remediation techniques that I'm going to that that my team worked through um, uh, requ require uh, application of a chemical that shouldn't be applied to the aluminum when it's as cold as it is outside. Where I live, there's snow out here, so I won't get a good bond. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little bit of a recap of um, what we talked about yesterday and the actual remediation, how we can prevent, first off, how we can prevent this from happening in the first place and how to... Um, clean up a, uh, a minor corro a minorly corroded um, convector um, and uh, and go forward for you. So <clears throat> last time we were here, we talked about an aluminum pipe. Um, let's get in a little more detail on that. This is an aluminum pipe. When aluminum is manufactured, the first thing that happens to it after it comes out of the furnace is oxygen from the atmosphere binds to that aluminum and creates a, about a three mil thick coating of aluminum oxide. Well, aluminum oxide is really tough and pretty anti-corrosive. Anti um, it's, it's, it, it's why if you put a piece of steel outside in the weather, it'll rust to pieces, but a piece of aluminum will get some minor pitting on it um, but it's, it's pretty tough, and that's because it gets a coating of aluminum oxide on it. That's what we need to talk about aluminum. So here's that aluminum pipe, and in the last video we talked about the fluid that's in here, and that fluid is water, propylene glycol, and anti-corrosion uh, chemicals. Well, the, the, one of the anti-corrosion chemicals is something um it's a phosphate silica mix we we talked about that chemical um its job is that it will jump out of solution and bond to the surface of the, the aluminum all of it the entire surface of the pipe and that keeps the water from even coming in contact with the aluminum great um, we also talked about how that uh, coating is not really, really, really long lived and it'll break off forming little chunks of scale that'll move on through your system. But that's OK because other molecules will come in and, and stand in their place. We talked about that. And inside the pipe system, great. That That's great. Works great. No problem. However, there are places in your trailer, in your Aldi system that are dead ends. Um, this is a dead end. Here's the aluminum pipe. Here is your uh, rubber tubing. Uh, here is the clamp around both and water gets in there. Now, 
we need to talk about that. One of the features of water is that it has, it's very small molecule and it has something called a capillary action. You've seen that where water, no matter how tightly we bond the rubber to the aluminum with a clamp, water will get in there. There's no way to stop it. No matter how tight you make that, water will get in there eventually. Um, and being a dead end, there's an issue. Inside the pipe, as the water moves along, if there's a little corrosion spot here, it's no big deal. Then another molecule comes up. But as these molecules in this water start traveling this direction, they can't find as, you know, when, a, when let's say that the, uh, the first silicate molecule starts bonding here, the liquid that continues to wick this direction has less and less silicates with it. So the, the aluminum is more and more um, exposed. Um, it's the dead end that's causing the problem. That's why this, this corrosion is happening here in this dead end and not happening here because as this liquid starts wicking in here, um, it starts running out of those additives. So let's talk about the chemicals that are involved. Um, no big deal. The star of the show is water. This is a water molecule. It has, like every molecule, certain properties. It has a certain size, it has a certain weight, um, but one of the properties that makes water great is it has something called a high specific heat. Well, what does that mean? A high specific heat means that this molecule is a really hard worker. You can pile heat upon heat upon heat and heat. It'll carry a ton of heat with it. So when it comes by the boiler, it'll pick up a big load of heat, and when it goes through the circle, through the system and it gets the radiator it'll give up that heat pick up a lot of heat and give up our heat that's great as this guy goes around your system it's a workhorse however in an ideal world your Aldi would be just full of water main problem with water it freezes and you know what happens when water freezes it expands and this would bust your boiler and give all kinds of trouble to you so scientists have coupled that water with another molecule called propylene glycol. Propylene glycol, its main claim to fame is it's an antifreeze. So now these two guys travel along together. The water is doing the majority of the work. The propylene glycol is not an anti-corrosion agent. His whole job is just to keep the water from freezing. So these guys travel along. Well, Water's a great molecule, but it has an Achilles heel in that it freezes. Propanes or uh, propylene glycol is a good molecule and it keeps water from freezing, but it also has a downside. When you heat that in the presence of oxygen, it turns into an acid. Uh, well, what's that going to do? It's going to travel around. It's going to be heated. It's going to pick up oxygen and it's going to, it's going to turn into an acid. Well, the problem is, is one of the things that aluminum oxide is susceptible to is acid. So these two guys, they'll start turning a little acidic and start eating into the pipe. Well, science got a cure for that too. They'll get, they put another molecule in here called a buffer. All right. Now that buffer <laughs> protects the propylene glycol from becoming acidic. The water does the work. The propylene glycol protects the water and the buffer protects the propylene glycol. And these guys travel around like the three amigos. They're, they're doing their job. And then there's the, the, um, the, uh, triphenylphosphate, uh, and he's sort of a helper. He's that guy that's attaching himself to the aluminum so that if, if any of this fails and you get some bare aluminum show, this guy will step in and he'll say, oh, I'll just uh, attach myself to the, to, the, to the wall of the aluminum. Well, inside the pipe, inside the pipe itself, that's not a problem because when this guy attaches himself to the aluminum and goes away, there's always another to take his place. But when you get in this dead end, you can see that there's not another to take his place. Same thing happens with the buffer, right? 
this this profiline glycol that's going down here with the water it starts turning acidic the buffer joins up and and uh, protects that that molecule but now you've got just profiline glycol and water continuing to wick down in here and that's the problem because that profiline glycol will turn acidic when it does turn acidic it'll chew through the aluminum oxide layer and it'll start corroding that's a little more detail of what's going on in there um, the the water molecules doing the work moving heat around the profiline glycol is protecting the water from freezing the buffer is protecting the profiline glycol from turning acidic and the uh, phosphate silicate is just there to help the situation by forming a blanket on the aluminum itself and when it gets in a dead end situation like this when it's being wicked and there and you can't get more buffers and you can't get more silicates when these are not available because this is such a tight space um, then the water and the profiline glycol can do their their nasty to the aluminum. That's why the uh, corrosion doesn't happen inside the pipe. That's why it's happening here. So let's shift gears a little bit. I want to talk about what can you do to stop it. Okay, so now we're going to shift gears a little bit. Now that you know what each of the molecules duty is the water is to do the work profiline glycol keeps the water from freezing buffers keep the profiline glycol from turning to acid and the uh, phosphate silica protects the metal so each one of those molecules has its own purpose and you know what those purposes are you know how it works inside an aluminum pipe and why it doesn't work so well when it comes into a, a dead end like this so now we're going to shift gears and we're going to talk a little bit about um, what you can do for prevention. Now, where this starts, where this always starts is if you've got a bend in the hose. We talked about that in, in number two. So the one of the things that you can do to your trailer is you can reroute those those um, hoses so that they exit straight. Right, not take the sharp bends. If you've got a sharp bend, if you've got a sharp bend in the middle of the hose, no problem. But if you've got a sharp bend where it connects to the uh, the convector, do something about that. If you have to replace this hose, do so. But make it so that each one of those hoses comes directly, perpen, you know, directly in line with the convector. That will help. You won't get such a big gap. The second thing that you can do is these kind of compression um compression rings <laughs> um they have one claim to fame they're fast that's all they're fast to put on and they're fast to take off and that's why companies use them get rid of them um they are outside of being fast they're not good they have a certain pressure that they'll put on there but they weaken over time like any metal um their, the tension and the, the springiness of the metal goes away over time and they get weaker and weaker. So first thing you want to do is you want to get rid of these, these um, type of um, clamps. You want to get a good stainless steel clamp and you want to get the right size. If you take a clamp that's too big and put on here, and you have, besides having this big old tang sticking out, it won't form a good circle here. This will be too big. You want to get a hose clamp that is the right size for this so that you don't have the, the so, you, so you have the opportunity to get a good, nice circle connection here. The next thing you want to do when you, when you, you want to clean this pipe. Don't do anything without cleaning it first. If I just like, uh, if I take a clamp, I may be in this situation. Um, I may want to just think, well, hey, I'll just put a second clamp on there. Well, if you've already got corrosion on here and you put a clamp on top of it, that first clamp won't do any good for you. Um, the, the corrosion's already started there and it will, that corrosion will actually keep the clamp from sealing the rubber down onto the aluminum very well. That's, that's a problem. So the, fir the first thing you need to do, this is a Brillo pad. 
And this is, um, is ethyl rubbing alcohol. It's just rubbing alcohol, about 90%. What you want to do is you want to take that Brillo pad. Let's do it on a piece of aluminum for you. This is a piece of aluminum. You're going to take the rubber off. You're going to take a Brillo pad to it. And you're going to scrub it clean. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how just a, a minor rubbing on that. You see how much how much corrosion? This got a little bit of corrosion on it. This is really nice clean. You're going to take this Brillo pad and you're going to scrub that down. Then you're going to take this alcohol and you're going to wipe it down. That ensures that there's no corrosion on there. There's no contaminants on there. And you can get a better connection between the rubber hose and the aluminum. So after you've scrubbed, after you scrub the aluminum off, you're going to take a brush and you're going to brush out any corrosion that's on the inside of this rubber tubing. Clean it, clean it real good. Then you're again, you're going to wipe it down with ethyl alcohol. That will, that will also, so that when you do go to make these connections again, that it has a chance. Now, then the next thing that's important is originally, the reason why some trailers have this problem and other trailers don't, it ha all has to do with the technician that put it together. Some technicians push this rubber hose on all the way until it stops and put a, put a hose clamp on it there. Look at the amount of surface area here. All of that is susceptible to corrosion. Some technicians will put the clamp here. Some will put it here. But what you want to do is after you've cleaned this all up, you want to back that rubber off of that nipple to where it's just barely wider than the clamp. You see how that limits the amount of surface area where it can trap the fluids? This kind of clamp, you're going to tighten it down really tight. All right. Again, this is not the right size for this fitting, but you're going to tighten that down tight. Pretty tight. Now, you can see that this connection is vastly superior to the original connection because there's not so much surface area for this corrosion even to start on. That's the main reason why some people's trailers have this issue and others don't. It has to do with how the hose meets the aluminum pipe and how the technician on that particular day installed that particular clamp. So you want to minimize the amount of surface area that's out here unprotected. You want to have a better clamp than this on it. You want to have the right size clamp. That will go a long way to making your system less susceptible to this convector connection corrosion problem. But there's the uh, chemists and the automobile technicians that we were talking to and, and working with this problem. Um, he, wow, we took off a lot of, a lot of ick. <laughs> um, came up with, it's not a unique idea. Um, in the automotive industry, as I said in the first video, in the automotive industry, they've been suffering from this problem for a long time. In fact, Mercedes-Benz was using aluminum components in their radiators long time ago before anyone else. And they were suffering from this corrosion issue. Um, they have, um, in the very high-end shops, they have a solution to this. It's not a new solution. It's just not one that's come um, from the, that seems to have made its way from the automotive industry to the hydronic system <laughs> heating industry, into the trailer industry. So what we've done, um, we've got a solution for you. We've just taken what the automotive technicians have been doing for years in the Mercedes shops and moving it over to the Aldi. Let's talk about that. Here is that aluminum pipe. Here is the rubber, and here's the clamp. Now we've moved that rubber, you know, 
the hose. We've we've moved the rubber hose in. We've got the right kind of clamp and everything. But no amount of clamp pressure will absolutely stop all of the wicking that's going to go on here. No matter how tight and how small you get that, some water's going to get in there. So what if we could coat this aluminum with a material just the tip of that nipple with a material that would bond to the aluminum tight on a molecular level so that the water could not get between the gap there is no gap between this coating and the aluminum there's no way for water to get in there in the first place so even if water gets into that gap between the aluminum pipe and the rubber hose even if it does get in there it can never touch the aluminum the bare aluminum this coating on the nipple is what's going to protect that so we uh when mercedes first started having these discussions about um how to solve their problem they came up they started using different chemicals um encoding that tip basically the the you know the end of that aluminum They started using a, a testing a lot of different chemicals here to something. They needed something that would first bond to the aluminum on a molecular level, really tight, um, not like not like paint, right? You could put a paint on here, um, and it would it could peel off. The other thing that they needed is that the material had to be impervious to all of those chemicals. It has to be. Um, waterproof it has to be super resistant to propylene glycol it has to be resistant to triphenylphosphates um, it has to be resistant to buffers so that whatever you're going to coat this with um, you're you're going to have to make sure that it's compatible with the chemicals that are floating in there and it has to withstand heat well the chemical that they found is, is if i can even pronounce it diphenylmethane di diisocyanite or MDI diphenylmethane diisocyanate or they then they just call it MDI so where can you get MDI so what is MDI this is MDI. This is a molecular model of MDI. It is carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. But look at this. Carbon, 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 carbon. Carbon is one of the toughest materials known to man. And you can see how this particular molecule, if we can turn that into a polymer and coat something with it, water molecules can't get through it. Propylene glycol molecules can't get through it. This is a barrier like you wouldn't believe. Well, there are paints on the market. Um, you may know them as um, POR15 if, you, you, um, if you've done any automotive rest restoration work. But um, the company that, that we found makes a product called Miracle Paint. And it, even though they call it a paint, it's not a paint in, in, normal, in a normal sense. Um, paint typically dries with air. This dries and hardens by contact with water molecules. Basically, you put it on a surface and any moisture in the air is what hardens it. It's a one part um, poly, uh, <laughs> one part MDI polymer. Um, the nice thing about um, this this polymer, it's if you look at the uh, the MSDS sheet of the MDI product, the Miracle Paint, you see that it is it is actually sixty percent MDI. The rest of it are just solvents that keep it in a liquid form. So this Miracle Paint is is a is is a great material and that's what they've been using um to great success this particular this is a chemical compatibility guide for 
polyurethane items and specifically MDI. And if you look down here, propylene glycol, you see the zero and the zero here? That means that propylene glycol does not react to MDI. It is impervious to MDI. MDI is impervious to water. MDI is impervious to propylene glycol. MDI is impervious to triphenylphosphates and silicates. It's impervious to the buffers. So if you could coat the tip of this aluminum pipe with uh, Miracle Paint, before you put the rubber hose on it with the right clamp, you're good to go. Now, we talk about Miracle Paint. I'm going to go ahead and give you a link to two of his videos. Um, the guy in the, um, the engineer who's working in this uh, Mercedes shop, he talks about, he shows you how to paint this, 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 MDI um, polymer onto the ends of the ends of the hose. Now he's doing it on on a steel hose, but it doesn't matter. It sticks to aluminum just as well as it sticks to steel. So he's got a steel um, radiator hose in his hand, and he's he's um, um, coating it with that. Shows you how to process it, how to how it dries and stuff. Um, the thing you need to know about the paint itself, um, it is nasty. It is toxic. You need to be doing this in a well-ventilated area. You also need to know is that it comes in one pint jars or one pint cans. If you open that can and you leave a little bit of the MDI on the surface, you know, like paint cans get, and you put that lid back on, that lid will never come off again. That the MDI bonds to the metal so well that if you open that can, and you pour a little bit out and you seal that can up and you don't clean that lid, you're done for. You'll end up taking a church key a tin can opener to open it and pour the rest out because it will seal itself. So what you want to do is you want to you want to get some of this this MDI stuff and I'll I'll um, drop some links for you. Here's a here's a here's a link to where you could find this MDI at. Um, it it is a nasty chemical. You got to use it in um, well ventilated spaces. You also don't want to get it on your hands. If you get this on your hands, it's permanent, folks. Until that skin rubs off, you're gonna have MDI on your hand. Um, if you open the can of it and you don't seal it right, um, it will it will go bad right away. So what you want to do in your trailer is you want to disassemble all of your system. You want to clean your system as best you can with um, a scotch Brite and the alcohol. And you want to have all of your connectors ready to go. You need to know that your brush, once you use this brush on this material, it's done. Um, once that MDI hardens in here, there's there are no good solvents for it. Um, don't get cheap brushes because that brush is just going to go away after you're done. So you're going to pour out some of that, that miracle paint and you're going to put it into a small container like this to use because it doesn't take much to do an end, but you're going to do all of your ends all at once. There's about 15 connectors in there because you want to get not just the convectors, but you want to get all of the joints that had, um, these kind of of um, straps on it. So buy a package of about 20 of these kind of um, um, fittings uh, to get rid of these. Take them all apart, scrub all of them down and do it all at once. So we're going to open some of this up. And it looks just like a backpack, but it is thick, thick, thick. Okay. I want to take some on here and we're going to close that up because it starts hardening right away. And you're just going to paint that, put a nice coating all the way around. And you're going to go inside the pipe about a quarter inch up. And that video that I link shows how to do this. And it sort of self levels. All right, we go all the way around. Now, this brush is done. <laughs> After this dries, 
you can now see that even though th the coolant may get past and start wicking into this joint, it can never touch that aluminum. It never can. So that even if the, the liquid, even if your coolant were to pass completely by here, it would just drip harmly out. It can't touch that aluminum. It never can. So this dead end is protected. So there you go, folks. Um, in a nutshell, you're going to look to get some miracle paint. You're going to look to get the right size worm style connectors. You're going to pull the rubber. You're going to pull the rubber hose off. You're going to clean that with a Brillo pad and aluminum. You're going to put the rubber back on, but not as far as it was, just enough, just as wide as your new clamps are and you're going to you're going to tighten that down if you want to go the extra step and you buy the miracle paint you're going to paint that surface you're going to let it dry you need to let it dry for at least two days um, because you need to make sure it's got to be hardened before you put it on there or it's just going to make a mess of things that's it folks um, that's our remediation for what's going on here this is why <laughs> I know it's been a long, a, a long spiel in chemistry. Some of you were interested in it. Some of you were not. But basically, you're going to give the aluminum the, um, the, the uh, coolant less of an opportunity to get, you know, less surface area to give a, a problem for. You're going to put a better clamp on there that's going to seal it better. You're going to clean the, the end up and you're going to put a miracle paint on it and you're not going to have any more trouble with it. Um, I will say this, nothing that men make is permanent. Everything will wear. How long this lasts, it'll, it, it will, uh, uh, a piece of aluminum coated like this will last a lot longer than a bare piece of aluminum. Um, instead of corroding in a year, you might get a decade out of it. Even with this, it will eventually corrode because no chemical is perfect. Um, when you apply the chemical, you might not be able to get, you know, you may miss a spot. So don't expect that this will solve the problem for the next 50 years. It won't. Um, got to keep an eye on things. If you see that typical bulging going on, you need to you need to treat it again. But this is the best that, that we have found. And in fact, the Mercedes people have been using this for a long, long, long time and having a really great success with it. So I'm going to leave you a link to the Miracle Paint and the two videos. One video shows how to apply it like I just did. And the other video shows you how to actually protect your investment in this stuff because it's not cheap. Um, even though you get it in a pint, it can't be shipped on an airplane. It has to be ground shipped because of the chemicals that are in it. And uh, in small batches, it, it's um, the stuff that I bought, it's about 50 bucks is, is how it comes and for a pint. And you need to understand that once you open that, it's going to start hardening. Even if you seal it back up, it's going to start hardening. So you have a lifespan of it. Um, if you use some on your on your pipe ends, don't expect to come back and open that can up um, a year from now and expect that can to be liquid. It will have um, it will have sol um, turned solid in there. That's that's just the nature of the animal. So um, we're going to coat your pipes with MDI and you're not going to have any more problems. So, guys, um, see you next time. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this and I hope that if you've got a problem um, that this could help. You're just going to clean your, your, your connectors up as best you can. If they're already too pitted, you have two choices. Um, you can cut that nipple off. You can remove a few of the, the, um, the radiator fins and make a new nipple area. Um, that's been very popular with people is that they will just cut the corroded end off take some pliers and peel off the fins to where they've got some unprotected here and you're going to stick the hose back on here. Coat it before you do um, and you work. The other option you've got is if it's really, really toasted and really corroded, um, there's a website called aldi.us where you can buy all new convectors. And I understand that's expensive, but if you're already too far gone and these guys, you can't cut it back anymore, um, 
you you're you're gonna have trouble. So we're gonna let you go here. This is we've gone way over time, but I had a lot to cover here. Um, miracle paint's the way to go, folks. See you later. Bye bye.